I'm Dr. Michael Main. I'm medical director of the Echocardiography Laboratory at St. Luke's Mid-America Heart Institute in Kansas City. I'm one of the original members of the International Contrast Ultrasound Society and currently serve on the board of directors and also as treasurer of this society. ICUS was uh, formed back in 2008, uh, a variety of medical specialists from cardiology, radiology, body imaging, and other specialties came together after uh, the FDA issued some really stringent warnings regarding the use of ultrasound contrast agents. Uh, this include a boxed warning, uh, multiple disease state contraindications, and a mandated monitoring period. Those of us who have used contrast enhanced ultrasound uh, for many years now recognize that not only are these agents very safe, they're also very efficacious. And that has been one of the principal goals of ICUS uh, to demonstrate and educate uh, to demonstrate and also educate to uh, patients uh, and policymakers uh, that this is uh, the contrast enhanced ultrasound is uh, an excellent technique. It provides us with better diagnosis, it does so in a cost affordable way, and also involves no ionizing radiation, which is obviously a major concern. Why is uh, CEUS important? Well, contrast enhanced ultrasound is very important in the field of echocardiography. We know that at least 10 to 15 percent of echocardiograms are technically difficult at baseline and this is usually due to patient related factors things like obesity uh, and lung disease we know that uh, Americans are certainly uh, getting bigger there's an obesity epidemic even with the improvements in ultrasound transducer technology uh, we still struggle every day particularly in the hospital setting at my uh, hospital St. Luke's Mid-America Heart Institute we use ultrasound contrast agents in approximately 30 percent of patients and as the ASE guidelines and other professional societies have acknowledged, uh, the contrast agents are extremely helpful both in making a diagnosis and in uh, affecting patient management, particularly with diagnoses at the cardiac apex. Things like left ventricular aneurysm, pseudoaneurysm, LV non-compaction, apical hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. It's not just a better image though, affects patient management. A very large paper published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology Imaging uh, recently by Curtin and colleagues in Houston showed that management was oftentimes affected uh, in patients, particularly in the intensive care units. Uh, as many as two-thirds of patients had a significant change in management, either another imaging test avoided or a change in medication. Things like discontinuation of heparin when and left ventricular thrombus was excluded, or discontinuation of medicines like positive inotropes when LV function was found to be actually hyperdynamic uh, and not reduced. Been a great deal of emphasis recently on the safety of diagnostic imaging techniques. And of course, any consideration of safety has to also take into account the efficacy of the technique. There's always a balance between safety uh, and efficacy. We know that ultrasound contrast agents, like all injectable agents, carry some risk. With ultrasound contrast agents, there's an approximate 1 in 10,000 risk of an anaphylactoid type reaction. But this type of reaction can occur with virtually any injectable agent, including iodinated contrast agents. What we do is take precautions to make sure that we have treatment available, including epinephrine, Benadryl, steroids, all of the common medications that we use to treat allergic type reactions. And the risk of bad news? What if you right. Right. Uh, the other risk or that must be balanced with any potential risk of an allergic type reaction is the risk of missed diagnosis or misdiagnosis. Uh, we can actually fail to diagnose serious medical conditions. A false negative examination, if you will, or make an inappropriate diagnosis. And of course, it's critical to remember that before we render appropriate therapy, we need to come up with an appropriate and accurate diagnosis. And in the critically ill patient, the patient hospitalized in the ICU, time is of the essence. We don't have all day, sometimes only minutes to make this diagnosis. So a technique that can be performed at the bedside while the patient is in the ICU uh, is very, very, uh, very, very important, very critical. We can't do that with other types of imaging, such as CT or MRI. Um, can you give any examples of 
examples of a, a patient who came to you and, and one diagnosis was apparent, but you used contrast and it was a completely different diagnosis. You would have missed something had you not used it. One common uh, scenario that presents itself all the time is the patient with a cardiomyopathy or a recent myocardial infarction in whom thrombus is suspected in the cardiac apex. A patient of mine, uh, Recently, a young woman, 40-year-old woman who had suffered an anterior wall MI was thought on non-contrast enhanced imaging to have a fairly large thrombus at the cardiac apex, and the decision was made to place this person on systemic anticoagulation with the expectation she might be on warfarin uh, indefinitely. In follow-up, however, we performed a contrast enhanced ultrasound and found there's absolutely no evidence for, con for uh, a thrombus at the left ventricular apex. So in this case, a young woman avoided the use of a potentially dangerous medication uh, over decades of life and was found to actually be at fairly low risk for systemic embolization. Over the past several years, there's been a great deal of safety information gathered with respect to ultrasound contrast agent. Much of this has been designed and mandated by the US FDA, but additionally, there have been a large number of investigator-initiated studies uh, performed. One large meta-analysis which brought together all of the data, or virtually all of the data, uh, from the investigator-initiated studies confirmed what most of us have known for a long time, and that is that there's a very low risk of a serious allergic type reaction uh, in patients who've been administered an ultrasound contrast agent. Perhaps one in 10,000 administrations are associated with a serious adverse event of this type. Also within this large meta-analysis, which was published in the American Journal of Cardiology by Kowajian colleagues in 2010, the odds ratio for mortality was assessed in a large group, over 200,000 patients who received an ultrasound contrast agent versus nearly 5 million controls, patients who had undergone echocardiography without a contrast agent. The odds ratio actually favored contrast enhanced echocardiography with a lower mortality in this subgroup of patients. Additionally, Multiple studies were recently completed by both Lanthius Medical Imaging and GE Healthcare. Uh, studies were mandated by the FDA, including a pulmonary hemodynamic study to assess the effect of these agents on pulmonary vascular resistance in patients receiving a clinically relevant dose, a large retrospective database study, which was propensity matched to determine whether patients receiving a contrast agent while hospitalized had a lower or similar mortality to patients undergoing non-enhanced echocardiography, and also just a routine clinical care registry of approximately 1,000 patients. The sum total of all of these studies was an excellent safety profile for the ultrasound contrast agents. There was no increase in pulmonary vascular resistance in patients receiving a clinical relevant dose of an ultrasound contrast agent while they were monitored uh, invasively in the cardiac catheterization laboratory. In one study, there was actually a lower mortality in patients who underwent echocardiography with an echo contrast agent while hospitalized. And in the large registry studies, over a thousand patients who received either Optison or Definity, there were no deaths and no serious adverse events. The further risk of not using an ultrasound contrast agent in a patient who has a non-diagnostic study is that further downstream testing will be required. Oftentimes, this involves ionizing radiation in a patient who then has to undergo a CT scan or a CT angiogram. MRI is of course another alternative but many patients due to permanently implanted devices can no longer undergo this procedure. So this risk also has to be weighed uh, against the very small risk associated with ultrasound contrast use.